Hare Krishna devotees, please accept my humble obeisances, all glory to Srila Prabhupada. We welcome devotees to our morning Bhagavatam class. This morning, uh, we're very fortunate to have His Holiness Shandramani Swami with us. We missed his association last week, so we are happy that Krishna was able to arrange for us to hear Maharaj this week. So Maharaj will be speaking on Canto 1, Chapter 7, Verse 35, and we're in the middle of the chapter entitled, The Son of Drona Punished. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, my obeisances to you and all the devotees. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Begin. Uh, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Mainam Pavar Hasita. Tratum Brahma Bandhu Imam Jahi So Savangnagasa Sutan Abdin Nishibalakan. Translation Lord Sri Krishna said, O Arjun, you should not show mercy by releasing this relative of a Brahma, Brahmana, Brahma Bandhu, for he has killed innocent boys in their sleep. Purport. The word Brahma Bandhu is significant. A person who happens to take birth in the family of a Brahman but is not qualified to be called a Brahmana is addressed as the relative of a Brahma and not as a Brahmana. The son of a high court judge is not virtually a high court judge, but there is no harm in addressing a high court judge's son as a relative and an honorable justice. Therefore, as by birth only, one does not become a high court judge. So also one does not become a Brahmana simply by birthright, but by acquiring the necessary qualifications of a Brahmana. As the high court judgeship is the post for a qualified man, so also the post of Brahmana is attainable by qualification only. The Shastras enjoin that it is good qualifications are seen in a person born in a family other than the Brahmana. A qualified man has to be accepted as a Brahman, and similarly, the person born in a family of a Brahman is devoid of Brahminical qualification. Then he must be treated as a non Brahmana, or in better terms, as a relative of a Brahmana. Lord Sri Krishna, the supreme authority of all religious principles, the Vedas has personally pointed out these differences, and he is about to explain the reason for this in the following slokas. Magyan timirandasya gyana jana salakaya chaksun militam yena tasmai shri gadavena maha shri chaitanya manavistam stapti tam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadam mayam dadati swam padati kam. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Srimakti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namini Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pricharine Nirvishesha Shunya Vadi Pastyatya De Satarine Panchakalpa Tarubhischa Kripa Sindhu Pepracha Patitanam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namaho Namaha Sri Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadat Harsi Vasadi Gaur, Bhaktivinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. This is a very interesting uh, situation we have here. There are many different philosophical and practical points religious points are all being thrown to one and turned to see what is the actual understanding. We have a situation where Asvatama, he is the son of Dronacharya and Dronacharya is a Kshatriya, but he has taken the position of a Brahmana. Actually, I'm sorry, he is an actual Brahmana but he has taken the position of a Kshatriya in order to fight in this battle of Kurukshetra. So we have the same situation here with his son Asvatama. He's, uh, he's actually a, uh, 
a uh, Kshatriya, but he is also now being dressed, addressed as the son of a Brahmana because uh, 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 his father, Dronacharya, is actually a Brahmana. He, he, he's taking the role of a Kshatriya. So Prabhupada, and you'll see in this discussion, you'll have opinions from Draupati, you'll have opinions from Bhima, you'll have opinions from Arjuna, and you have Krishna's opinions also, all thrown together about how to deal with this heinous act of killing these innocent boys who are sleeping. Uh, there was no reason for this activity, but this uh, Brahma Bandhu, we can give him that much credit, is uh, being said, being, uh, he acted in order to try to please Dronacharya. I'm, I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry. He, he wanted to please Duryodhana by killing the sons of the Pandava, but he killed their, their sons and not the Pandavas themselves. And so he was thinking Drona, Drona, uh, Duryodhana would be happy about this. Actually, it turned out later that Duryodhana was not at all happy. And so his activity was quite heinous and completely, uh, what we say, sinful, what he had done. But now he's connected with a person who is a Brahmana, and he's the son of a Brahmana, although playing the role of a Kshatriya. <laughs> so here we're getting into a nice discussion about the difference between, or the not the difference between, the correlation between a qualify qualification. Hare Krishna Prabhu, it appears that we have lost Marsh because of connection, so we'll just wait for him to uh, log back on. Thank you for your patience. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, you're on mute, Maharaj. Yeah, our connection dropped for a minute. Now we were more, we have a now more stable connection here. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, so you see this mixture of qualifications and positions, both from the higher to the lower, and from lower to the higher. Um, Prabhupada would also say that you know, a, a person may be born in a family of doctors and therefore uh, because of being born in that family, they're exposed to medicine and therefore they have the tendency or have has a good uh, start in becoming just like the family they are born in. But still they have to perform the activities and come up to the standard. So there is an advantage of birth, but birth is not the characteristic or the qualification for accepting a particular title and activity. It is based on one's qualification. Any, med any man can put out a sign and say that I'm a doctor and he may, be, he, may, he may have read some medical books, but that will not qualify him to, to practice and he will be called a quack. <laughs> by uh, you know terminology he will never be 
he will be removed from that position by the authorities. So in the same way, we see that a Brahmana, one who is, has the qualities of a Brahmana, but qualities are not enough. One has to act in that capacity in order to be considered to be a Brahmana. So qualifications lead to activities. If one has the qualification but does not act, they're not, they cannot be accepted. And of course, the vice versa, if one is simply born in the family and does not have the qualification but expects to act and receive you know, the title of a Brahmana, then that is pretentious and is not acceptable. So what we have here is an interesting situation. You have Asvatamana who acting in the role of a Kshatriya, although he's a Brahmin, has committed a heinous crime like that. So Krishna is advising Arjuna in different ways, not so much to give Arjuna the advice to, the, to accept but to see how Arjuna wants to deal with this. He said, you should not show mercy by releasing this relative of Brahmana. He doesn't tell him what to do. He said, do, do not show him any mercy. Whereas Bhima, Bhima is saying he should be killed immediately. And Draupadi, she's on the other side. She's saying, oh, well, actually, because he is the son of Dronacharya, and Dronacharya is our spiritual teacher, he is also respectable. Then, uh, and of course, his, his mother, Dronacharya's wife, Dronacharya has already been killed. Now the wife is a widow, now she may lose her son because if he's punished by, you know, the, the punishment of death, she will lament even, even more. Draupadi is thinking, well, I have lamented so much for the loss of my children. So she was feeling empathy in a compassionate way towards uh, the uh, wife of Dronacharya, the mother of Asvatama. So now we have Draupadi wants to let him go. Bhima wants to kill him. Arjuna is the one that is going to have to make the decision and Krishna is kind of mediating the both to see how Arjuna will do this. And Krishna says, Krishna is somewhat neutral, but at the same time, he's encouraging Arjuna to take action. So it's an interesting pastime. You'll see how it plays itself out ultimately. But the principle here is, and this is where we can actually benefit from, that if we're in a particular position, then that position has certain qualifications and activities attached to it. One should be qualified and not simply accept the position and, and say that the position itself gives one the qualification. We see, find that in society today, we have people who are elected officials who are in positions of control in the society all the way up to the present president of a country but they don't have the qualifications for leadership. They are no better than the people who they're trying to rule, and therefore they, don't have, they are not you know, qualified. And therefore the society is uh, misdirected, or you might say they're going in the wrong direction. They're going away from progress in life, either both materially and especially spiritually. So this, you'll find that everywhere in society, people have positions with no, without the qualification. Everything is done elected. And if it's not done elected, it's done through some kind of black money where people pay in order to get some position, in order to um, further their, uh, their bank accounts. In other words, it's all done in a devious way. But Vedic culture gives us the standard that uh, position indicates that one has qualifications for the position and the activities which complement that position. Otherwise, 
it becomes pretense and people who are under the, the under the care of those persons suffer or they don't be, they don't benefit at all like that so this has been a long term uh, uh, contention that a person born in a brahmin family is automatically a brahmin it goes all the way back to bhakti siddhanta saraswati when his father, Bashila Bhakti Vinota Kaur, was in a debate, a, a, uh, an arranged debate between the Brahmins and the Vaishnavas to indicate who is more superior. Are the Brahmins the superior class within society or is it the Vaishnavas? Mm -hmm. And of course, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati wrote one treatise, which later became a book called Brahmana and Vaishnavas. And then later he spoke in the assembly of many Brahmins and was respected and given the, the position of qualification. In other words, they accepted what he said as being the ultimate principle. And that was that a Brahman Although they may be a Brahmin, if they're not acting according to a Brahmin, they're no better than whatever activity they're performing. But even if a person is born in a Sudra family, but has Brahminical qualities and is acting within that capacity, they should be given that title. They are considered to be a Brahmin. So the main point here is it's not by birth and it's not by position, it's by qualifications. So in our Krishna consciousness movement, we play different roles within the society. But we have to understand there are qualifications and also spiritual qualifications that are required in order for one to carry out their services as a service to the society, as a service to people in general. Uh, it's nice to have a position. It's nice to be, as Srila Prabhupada said, you make advancement in Krishna consciousness by how much you accept uh, responsibility in order to push on the Krishna consciousness movement. So responsibility is something that one should uh, try for. In other words, let me take on uh, situations where I can help but at the same time, one has to uh, come up to the standard where the qualifications fit the particular position like that. Now, there is another principle that sometimes a person may not be qualified for a position, but once they get in and start performing the activities, they start developing the qualifications. Now that is of course a little risky but it's been done. Srila Prabhupada also did that in the beginning of our movement where he gave positions to devotees who weren't qualified for the position, uh, hoping and praying at the same time that they would develop into those, into those positions and excel. He did that with the sannyas order of life. He gave sannyas to people he knew weren't up to the standard but they were struggling to come up to that standard. They were sincere. They had um, shown some, some uh, success in the positions that they were serving as. And so Prabhupada took that chance, but he took that chance in order for, because we needed leaders to take the positions in order to preach and spread Krishna consciousness. But we see, of course, in the history of our movement, people have fell from that position uh, because of the lack of coming up to the standard of the qualifications needed and the consciousness also necessary to, um, to execute devotional service in that particular ashram. So sometimes there is a chance taken like that. But in general, we understand things in terms of example. An example is the, um, is the indication of qualification. It's not precept. 
what do we mean by that? People can say anything, but they have to show by example, just like Srila Prabhupada. He was preaching very strongly and also and very high level of understanding of spiritual life. But he was showing by example his spiritual prowess in everything he did. And everyone could understand that, yes, uh, here is a very highly elevated spiritual personality. And that was obvious. And he was not just accepting this role because somehow or the other, because you see people, there are people who are very good at speaking. And they have mastered the art of speech and they know how to use that to gain positions, to gain followers, to gain confidence, um, yeah, to deceive other people. So uh, one has to be very much qualified and not simply speak nicely. One has to show by example. All right, these are some of the examples we can understand from this. And um, Prabhupada in this purport uh, gives uh, Asvatthama some credit saying he is Brahma Bandhu. He happens to be connected to a Brahmana and therefore he's given the term Brahma Bandhu. Prabhupada says no harm in addressing a high court judge's son as a relative of an honorable judge, no harm in addressing one as a relative of a Brahman, although they are not on the level of Brahminical qualifications. So Krishna uses that word uh, to help Arjuna understand what to do. Krishna's words are indicative of what he wants Arjuna to know before Arjuna makes the decision, whether to release him, to punish him, or to even to you know kill him, whatever Arjuna, Arjuna is the one to make the decision. And Bhima, Draupati, and Krishna are all there to give their opinion. But Krishna really understands the whole thing clearly. He knows what Arjuna needs to understand what should be done. And Krishna also knows what should be done, but he's not going to say it directly. He's going to allow Arjuna to come to that decision. And you'll see that also is there in Krishna consciousness. Sometimes the guru can tell the disciple what to do, but rather than doing that, he wants the disciple to figure it out himself by giving indications in relationship to what should be done, rather than saying, do it like this, in order for the person to come up to a higher standard and to give credit to that person for executing the service. So that, that's there also. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for such a deep class. Um, I hope there are questions. It's a very nice topic. I would definitely re request the devotees, if you have a question, please do unmute yourself and ask a question. Or you can raise your hand and I will, you know, call upon you um, if you don't mind. So um, just looking down the list here for anyone who has raised hands or questions. Uh, okay. Okay. That's a question by Parikshit. Go ahead. Hare Krishna Maharaj, I don't, uh, I don't know if you can see any picture of me, but I don't. <laughs> anyway, I'll try to. Um, please accept my humble obeisances. Oh, glory to your power part. I'm not so good at using a cell phone for this, but um, thank you very much for this class. And um, when you were speaking, um, I was reminded of a morning walk recording that I heard with, um, as far as Shri Prabhupada's concern with the positions that he gave uh, some of your God family members that you were mentioning, some of them, uh, they had to live up or at least try to come up to that. He was saying, he said, in America, and I'm quoting him directly, in America, I did some things that I should not have done. 
that was his first comment about this. I did something I should not have done. Um, and then one of these disciples, your God brother walking with him, he said, um, but the preaching necessitated that. He said, yes. I said, yes, really. The preaching necessitated that. And that's so when you were saying um, that there were some people that were given a position and then they had to come try to come to that standard, then I remember that I wanted to add that to uh, to what you said. If you want to comment, that's up to you, Hare Krishna. Yeah, that, I mean, that. yeah, Prabhupada said that, and he also indicated that in other areas too. He took a chance. He knew that his time was short, and he wanted to spread the movement as fast as he could, establish a, a structure of the movement that would be somewhat foundational when he would leave. And therefore, there was a lot of it was on the job training. <laughs> In other words, take the position and learn at the same time. But then we had Prabhupada at the same time praying for the devotees and uh, supporting them in that struggle to come up to the standard. So he was also there. He didn't just give it and then, you know, leave it. He was also supporting his best in, in every situation. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah. Next, uh, Mansi and Diptesh Prabhus, you had your hand up. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj, this is a, this is a very deep uh, understanding uh, for the class today. And I, I think the verse has been excellent because we just met one gentleman a few days ago and he was telling to my son, you know, I come from a Brahman family, so I'm a Brahman. Nobody can become Brahman. Only by birth you can become a Brahman. And he was so proud of that. Yet he was doing all kinds of funny things. So my son was giving him a sort of in a nice way that you have to have a qualifications rather than by birth. Uh, so Mahara, thank you for this. I have two questions for this, Mahara. So first one is um, within within our society, we we tend to develop Brahminical qualities because or of understanding, uh, learning the scriptures, preaching, and these are all Brahminical qualities. Uh, and then we also have the Varnashram uh, initiative as well. So how do we understand? Uh, because here, you know, you know if, if they have to be by qualification, so is the goal to then become a Brahman by qualification, obviously, or not? Uh, Maharaj, I don't know the answer. But then if somebody has an inclination, which is a Kshatriya base, or somebody has a Shudra inclination for service, for example, and to serve others, but then do they then develop, if they are Brahman initiated, for example, then how do we, how, how do we reconcile these two things? Because if it is by qualifications and the nature, um, but then at the same time, we, we, we want to develop Brahminical qualities of cleanliness, truthfulness, studying the scriptures and preachings and things like that. Well, well Prabhupada's program was to establish a Brahminical uh, sector as the, the leadership of the society. But then he had a plan for Van Ashram to unfold that, that into the other two areas of Van Ashram, that was Kshatriyas and Vaishyas. He, 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 he mentions that Sudras don't, do not need training but Kshatriyas do need training and those who have the inclination for uh, business, agriculture, car, cow protection, accounting, they also require some training. So we have established, or at least focused on establishing our society as a Brahminical society, but then we finally see that people were not up to this standard and there were other indications in our of people in our society that had tendencies towards, um, you know, business or tendencies towards, in other words, they were more Vaishya and Kshatriya. We haven't been given enough emphasis or hardly any emphasis in training in these other areas. That's why Prabhupada wanted it. He said, we need to establish these Vanashram colleges where Brahma, Brahmins would teach the other two Varnas, three, all three Varnas, the Brahman, Kshatri, and Vaishya in terms of the activities. 
like that. And of course, we are Vaishya, we are, we are, I'm sorry, we are Vaishnavas. So we're meant to develop the qualities of a Vaishnava, and those are, they are transcendental to all of the qualities in the material three modes. In other words, they're even, they're transcendental to all three modes of material nature, but they indicate, they are indicated by the mode of goodness. They're indicated by the mode of goodness like that. So we are Daivi Van Ashram. That is our mood, that is our society. We are spiritual. We are Vaishnavas, but we are playing the role of Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, and Vaishyas, like that. That is, I'm speaking from the ideal platform. This was Prabhupada's picture for development. We've put a lot of time, emphasis, and education in, in people becoming Brahmanas. And we have somewhat marginalized these other Nirvanas. And therefore, our society remains somewhat lopsided in organi organi organizing it as a complete social unit. So that still needs to be developed yet. And of course, more emphasis on Brahmanas too. And then there should be a check and balance program that if one is acting and one is in the, in the role of a Brahmana, there should be a system of checks and balances to make sure that they're following that. Not that we give Brahminical initiation and we forget about them and then they forget about their responsibilities either. We have some, sometimes we have people who are for medical initiation, but they're not performing any service at all. Yeah. So what is that? It has no meaning. <laughs> yeah. Just to have the thread doesn't really give you the, you know, the, the qualification of being a Brahmin. You have to act in that. So in our society, we still have to, we have to blend these principles according to the varnas through training and then train people accordingly and then develop that training and engage it in devotional service because we need kshatriyas we need kshatriya services we need vaishya services and we need brahminical services all three are necessary in order to establish the social body if you have a nice, if you have just a Brahminical, then you have just the head, but the head requires assistance from the legs, from the arms, from the belly, in order for the social unit to be, to be, uh, uh, let me say, complete. So that's why Prabhupada has given us, he's given us the formula. He said, you know, established this Vanashram system. Daibi Vanashram. We always have to make sure we understand it's Daibi Vanashram. We are not labeled as Brahmanas, Kshatriyas, or Vaishyas, or Sudra. We are Vaishnavas, but we're serving in these different ways. And in order to, to develop the, the social body, there has to be education. And as Prabhupada laid out the plan of education in 1970. We'll just wait again for Marge to come back. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Marge is back. Sorry, we lost the connection again. We're a little bit in here in our connections 
Um, okay, uh, does that help to answer your question a little? Yes, Maharaj. I think this, this is clear because uh, I was thinking more. Yes, we are Devi Vainashram and the Vaishnavas are transcendental. Uh, the con the principle. The thank principle you. is. And uh, thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Mother Gita, um, you had your hand up, Mother, next, and after yeah. yours, Priksha. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my most humble obeisances at your lotus feet. Our glorious to Srila Prabhupada. Maharaj, could you please explain? You're talking about spiritual qualifications. Could you please explain that so we can figure out whether we have those or not? Thank you. Yeah, these are mentioned both in the Nectar of Devotion and on the Srimad Bhagavatam. What are the qualifications of a spiritual? a spiritually active person. And they are mentioned throughout. There are, there's a long list, but the most prominent ones are one is there are Brahman qualifications, which are somewhat indicative of the spiritual qualifications. And that's mentioned in the, um, in the Bhagavad Gita where Krishna says, you know, uh, peacefulness, uh, self-control, uh, tolerance, cleanliness, simplicity, uh, jnana vijnana, uh, theoretical knowledge of Shastra, uh, realized knowledge of Shastra, knowing religious principles and acting on those religious principles, uh, these are the essential uh, truthfulness and, of course, um, uh, dira. Dira means equipoised in both happiness and distress. In other words, not moved by loss or gain. So these are the main qualities of a spiritually active person. Humility. And that is also high on the list. And that's also mentioned in, the, in in Bhagavad Gita also. So there's a whole long list like that. You, if you do a little research throughout both Gita, uh, Bhagavatam, and especially in the devotion, you'll get a long list of what are the qualifications of those who are engaged in spiritual activities. These qualifications are all in the mode of goodness, not in the mode of passion or ignorance. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Mother Gita. Most, Next, uh, I'm sorry, Maharaj. Lord, Lord, yeah, Lord Chaitanya emphasized four qualifications. Humility, tolerance, pridelessness, and giving respect to all others. He made these four the most prominent in his preaching. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. I was just writing down the notes as he was speaking. Um, next is Prakshit. Hi, Krishna Maharaj. Thank you very much uh, for explaining this. In fact, I was going to talk about the but when you said these things are uh, four uh, principles that Lord Titania laid down, humility, tolerance, pridelessness, and giving respect to others, I immediately thought of Trinada Pishni Chena, Tarori Vasa Hishina, Amani Namana Dena, which is tolerance, you know, and, you know, well, you know, the tree is tolerant and the grass is humble. And then, uh, um, Radha Swami always said that we should offer respect to others, but not expect respect from them. He always said that. Um, that's just, so that was a comment. So what I wanted to talk about was this Van Ashram business, but, but Jira Maharaj spent quite a bit of time on it, and then I'll ask a question about it. So what he said was that when Sri Prabhupada was leaving the body, that was one thing he felt he hadn't established, the Van Ashram, not that Van Ashram, 
So he was going to come, especially to Gidenagri, to establish Van Ashram. This is what Maharaj told us so many times. Of course, he didn't make it here. He returned and then Supreme Papa left his body. So when we were there in the 90s, there was a hot topic of discussion um Shatsu Maharaj disciples, some of them were, you know, and then your own God brothers who were there too. The whole thing about Van Ashram, should we have Van Ashram? Then and I heard that we Van Ashram also. But it seems like they wanted to establish a Van Ashram system, not that we Van Ashram system in Iskan. And Bhakti Jaya Maharaj opposed it. The Van Ashram opposed it because he said, well, we're not at the level where people would would really respect the bodhis or maybe you just say somebody is a kshatriya a devotee and somebody is a brahman the brahman devotee may feel higher than the kshatriya or god forbid somebody thinks that is is a uh, a shudra then a brahman devotee would really put, look down on the shudra devotee okay so that was the point he was making i wonder if you, if you you know have that, a take on it that's a wrong mentality mm. if we see people according to the activities they're performing in devotional service, then we are on the material platform. All activities in devotional service are divy, they're spiritual. Whether one is worshiping the deity or cleaning the floor in the temple, all the activities are equal. But for the social division, in order to carry on all of the activities of the society, we make these different categories, that's all, which fit into the four varnas, that's all. But if we start to identify, well, I'm a Brahmin uh, because I'm doing Brahminical work and you are uh, a Vaishya because you're doing that kind of work, then we're on the material platform. It's the wrong type of thinking. All the, everyone who is serving the Lord is a Vaishnava. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Because, well, you know how Maya is. You can make people think different things when they should. Hare Krishna. That's why yeah, I brought it up. Yeah. If we fall down to this material consciousness, then we will never we will never be able to understand what is devotional service. Uba Goswami gives the formula. That service, which is done to please the Lord with the intention to please the Lord without any desire for personal gain, either either subtly or grossly, is devotional service. So anyone who's doing that, it doesn't matter what particular service they're doing, is engaged in pure devotional service. It doesn't matter what service. But... We have to understand that there is a need for departmentalizing our activities in order to carry on the needs of the society. And that's natural. Not everyone can be engaged in Brahminical activities, but it, that doesn't make one lesser. All these things are necessary. You need temple presidents, you need people who can do business, you need people who can preach. Everyone has their role, but we are all engaged in devotional service. Therefore, it's divy. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. There was a hand up by, I believe, uh... Marco Mutzi, if I'm not mistaken, but the hand went down. Um, if you would like to ask your question, provide missed your hand, but I thought he had his hand up. Uh, Hare Krishna, my humble obeisances. Okay, I wasn't quick enough to lower uh, the hand, and I did that because um, perhaps it's, uh, I mean, Varnashram is a very, very catchy topic, very nice topic, but maybe we had too much of it. Maharaj. My humble obeisance is all glorious, Srila Prabhupada. My obeisance is to you. Actually, um, I'm listening and hearing devotees, and I'm thinking this is still quite confusing to many. So I sought to offer an explanation I've heard from Bhaktivedya Purna Maharaj, which, at least in my case, aided quite a lot in clarifying this, uh, this topic. 
you have nicely called it the Daiv Varnashram and the difference. Uh, but there is one key point that Maharaj made, and would you mind if I if I speak a little about that? Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. So, whatever we do, and however our society is um, uh, constructed, and in accordance with Varna, Daiv Varnashram Dharma, there will always be Varna, and there will always be Ashram. And then, when it comes to devotees, we're not talking about Varna, although it exists and it's present. Not everyone is Brahmana by Varna. As you have just, your previous point was that we do need leaders. We do need people who will plow the field with cows. And if we just take um, uh, uh, New Rajadama, for example, that's, that's the uh, example that I like to bring up every time we speak about these things. Although, it's a Brahminical um, society, but still there are people who are just cleaning not just the temple, but the toilet as well. And, uh, and there are devotees who are leading and managing and so on. So when it comes to uh, proper establishment and proper understanding of Varnashram Dharma, there is always Varna. So devotees also do come into those four categories. But the yeah. thing which distinguishes us is and which makes us all brahmanas is not the duties, but the behavior, which means brahminical culture. Right. And that's part of, that's part of ashram, as, uh, as Bhaktivedya Purna Maharaj explained. And he used uh, it's his expertise on Srila Prabhupada's commentary and on uh, Krishna constructions in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 18, verses 60 something, 63 and 4, I believe. Where Krishna mentions the um, Brahma Teja Sobhava Jam, the, uh, not the duties, but the behavior, the mentality of a Brahmana. So this is where devotees um, uh, fit into. So there is only this one culture, which is Brahminical culture. It applies to every human being. And as much as it applies to every human being, to that extent, the human being is a Vaishnava or a Brahmana. Yeah, but then there's training. Training is, you're missing the one point, and this is the thing that's the foundation, is that all of this requires training, because Kalodra Sudra Sambhava, everyone in this age, doesn't have these qualities, but they these qualities lie dormant. And therefore, unless training is there, it doesn't manifest itself. That was the reason for the Van Ashram College, which Prabhupada made that a point, that in order for it to develop, there has to be regulated training, both in education and philosophical teachings and in practical, in practical services also. And that will raise, that will raise the uh, participants of the college to the Brahminical platform. But we will still remain in yes. their duties, whatever they, wherever they naturally fit into, according to their mentality. According yeah, to and that requires that requires observation by the teachers to see what what are the tendencies of the students that they are training. So just like we that's mentioned also, in, yeah, that's sorry. mentioned in the Bhagavatam, where Prabhupada said it's the duty of the spiritual master to observe the disciple and see what is his nature, and then engage him accordingly. So just like Vidura, who was one of the highest, or one of the most learned Vaishnavas, um, very, um, very uh, a great devotee, but still a Shudra. So we don't right. judge him by, his, by his, uh, uh, the duties that he performed, we, ju well, we don't judge him at all, but we, we take his example from his ashram perspective, and that is his um, Brahminical duties that he performed, his quality yes. of life. But he, but he, yeah. Again, that's that, that's that same principle. One, if one is acting in a particular category, he should be understood to be in that category. Yes, he's yes. Both, he's showing the activities and the proper qualifications, both. Yes. Yes, but it's just that that's you, little point. Using the that's... example of Vidura, you know, Vidura was criticized and 
because his opinion was supposedly coming from a sudra. Although he was he was acting in a, in a an advisory way, using Brahminical teachings, he was rejected because of his position because of his birth. So that was that, that, that's why he was discriminated against. Yes, and that was the fault of the regular Varnasam Dharma. Yeah. While in Dharma Varnasam um, society, that will not happen. It all comes down to training, though. Unless we have the training, you know, everything will remain either dormant or whimsical. <laughs> But on the other hand, interesting point, interesting thing is uh, to notice that those people who criticized Vidura, there, there were, there was, uh, we, we can't find any, any sentence in Mahabharat about them being, uh, not being uh, good in what they were doing. In other words, he was criticized by Duryodhan, who was actually very respected as a king. Yeah, yeah, but he had an agenda, though. <laughs> yes, so from from their perspective, everything was actually according to scriptures, but there are higher scriptures as well. Yeah, but Duryodhan was he, he was he was you know he was avaricious. He wasn't using, he, he, he was using scripture for his own selfish interest. Therefore, it's, it's, it cannot be accepted. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Parikshit had his hand, has his hand up. Go yeah. ahead. Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj, could you please comment on Draupadi um, saying that, um, I mean, you mentioned that um, <clears throat> uh, Kripi's son should not be killed. The, the, right. the humility part of it. Can you com comment, connect that to humility uh, of Draupadi? If you could do that, please. Oh, it was, it, she was, she was, it was more like compassion mm. in the sense that she's suffering for the loss of her sons she doesn't want creepy to f suffer in the same way at the loss of his her son mm -hmm. you know i'm i'm suffering because my sons have been killed why should i cause suffering to another lady mm -hmm. and sanction the killing of his son mm -hmm. but her judgment is both it's seen in two ways. It's seen from both different, two different angles. One, it seemed like it wasn't very intelligent. And she's compared, her intelligence is compared to a small boy. But then again, when you look at it from another angle, she's very empathetic about not causing uh, distress to another mother in the role of a mother herself. Mm -hmm. So you'll see in this particular pastime, there's a lot of emotions and principles that appear to be contradictory. That's why our Krishna is mediating this whole thing, waiting for Arjuna to decide. What to do. Everything's in the mix now. All the, <laughs> all the opinions are there. Now Arjuna has to decide mm. what to do. Mm. Mm. And finally, Arjuna is a little confused at the end without revealing the whole thing, Krishna indicates what he should do. And then he gets the point and acts. So what we come, it comes back to is trying to understand in every situation we're in, what does Krishna want? <laughs> of course, that comes down to understanding what does the spiritual master want, which is non-different. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for putting light more on this. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Maharaj. Dear Krishna, you can ask a question, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna, Prabhupada. Grace to you. 
Maraj, this is a very, very uh, special section where, uh, and like, like you said, so many opinions, so many views in the mix. So uh, probably it was easy for Arjun to not get confused and still take an intelligent decision, which was satisfying to Krishna, although Krishna meant something and he was saying something else to Arjun here. For us, how can we make sure in, because even in our yeah. devotional life, we see so yeah. many conflicts, so many views, even between so many devotees and everybody is trying to serve. Yeah, it becomes so easy. To... Yeah, it becomes easy. First of all, you use your intelligence to understand. And then when you reach a certain point, in order to confirm your decision, you should definitely present your decision to higher authorities. Or if you haven't reached a decision, you should present the problem to someone who can who has that knowledge. Therefore, we go to the spiritual master or someone on the level of the spiritual master. Yeah. And we may use our intelligence and come up with an idea or a solution to the situation, but then to confirm, to make sure that we are moving in the right direction, we should get the blessings and the sanction of the spiritual teachers, or if they want, they can adjust and say, well, what you say is nice, but maybe you should do it this way or you shouldn't do it this way. This is one of the what is one of the defects of Kali Yuga. People don't want to go to higher authority. They think everybody thinks that they can figure it out for themselves. And that's why we have so many wrong decisions. Thank you so much, Maharaj. You made it so easy. Thank you. Mm. Hare, Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble Okay. Excellent question, dear Krishna, and thank you for saving us much with that answer to go to the high authorities. Yeah. And that's why I feel, as, as you were answering the question, Raj, I, I feel so fortunate that I have your personal email address <laughs> that I can come to you, Maraj, and to my other in the senior devotees for guidance. Thank you so much, Maraj. <laughs> And then I will go to my my authorities to check out what you say. <laughs> Marge, you're being so kind to me. Thank you so much. I pray that I always have your blessings and your guidance, Marge. Thank you so much. And that's a question mm -hmm. by Prickshin. Um, thank you so much. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Shiva Prabhupada. So when you're discussing this, then... Um, my mind came to the poem that Srila Prabhupada wrote when he came to America and he, the difficulties he has, and he was praying to Krishna. He says, make me dance, make me dance, oh Lord, make me dance. He was referring to himself as a puppet then, a puppet then. So is that, in that sense, even higher than what you're talking of in terms of, and then this, I'll just leave it up to you to comment because you have just said that people, when they think about whatever that they want to do, that they should consult higher authorities. But it seems to me like even a puppet is just there to be, to be used by the puppeteer as the puppeteer wants. Would that be higher consciousness for the what is that when they're serving the spiritual <laughs> master? Yeah, okay, go ahead. Krishna and the spiritual master wants us to use our intelligence. Mm. It's not that we just go every time to higher authority for answers. That's that's not what I meant particularly. That's not what I meant. Um, what I was really saying, and uh, I don't like to go against uh, sannyasis necessarily, but but please uh, uh, forgive me. Um, then let me put it this way: we have our brains, and say we pray in the morning that Krishna whatever comes to our mind that you're helping us, you know, let it be approved by you. Even though we're using our own intelligence, let it be approved by you in the service. Would that be a better way to put it? I don't know. Well, it's a or nice prayer, that. but then approval should be understood in a practical sense. What, what, has, what has happened in the past, we can use as an example for how to act in the present. How did you very much, yeah. answer yeah. these questions in the past? Mm. Thank you very much. This, that's all I wanted to know. <laughs> Marge, I have a question uh, uh, related to what Prichard just asked, and that is, um, and I being still, used 
uh, being allowed to be a oops, Marge is going to get something. I'm still with you. Okay, that, that's fine, Marge. Now, what I was going to ask Marge was um, when uh, bit, you know trying to put together Dirk Krishna's question and Prakshit's question of going to the authorities to a spiritual master, to our seniors, you know, to make sure what we're doing is right and allowing ourselves to be a puppet and an instrument in the Lord's service. Do they go hand in hand marriage or is one over the other? Well, I think, I think they're the same. Mm. If you want to dance, you you can dance in so many different ways, but there is a way that the, that you should dance. So that that is the the guidance of the authority. Yeah. Um, the thing is, we shouldn't think we have all the answers, but we should try to use our understanding, our knowledge, to understand how to arrive at the right conclusions. Prabhupada said you have to use your intelligence to execute devotional service. It's not that you know, you're always going to the higher authorities, but if it is the mood of bhakti that allows us to get the answers we need. In other words, we are dependent on mercy. And, if, and when we can pray, and also un try to understand how to accept that mercy and apply it in a, every each and every situation. But then again, if there's situations where we get confused, we don't have a clear understanding, there's where questions come. And that's, that's also mentioned in the Shastras. In order for clarification, questions and guidance can be sought after. But then again, we're getting that every day with, with the lectures, with the books. So that's already available. Now, if we need more, then that's a, that's a certain case, special case. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. Um, I get Maharaj. a sense of what you're saying. Anyway. Maharaj, I have one more question, Maharaj, from the class. Um, um, and you were mentioning in your class about uh, devotees, you know, always taking, uh, getting in, you know, uh, into the mode of taking up responsibility to push forward the movement. I have a question, much. How does one know that one is qualified for a position, knowing that risk is involved? Like you were mentioning, Venture Prophet was there, you know, because he had such a short time. He did. A, he had to do a lot to make sure that the movement goes on, um, but there was some risk involved. But yet he did it. But in today's times, where we are at in Iskon March, how does one know that one is qualified for a position? Well, we don't really seek positions. We seek service, and through our service, we exhibit certain characteristics and qualities which move us into a position accordingly. Just like being a spiritual master or being in the role of a spiritual master, you don't try to become a spiritual master, you try to preach. And then people come forward and based on your preaching, they, they are inspired and then it's understood, oh, this person can be in, given that position because they're acting in that way. So we just try to serve. We're not eager for positions. Thank you, Maharaj, for clarifying. We shouldn't be, be aspiring for positions. We should be aspiring for service wherever we are. If the opportunity comes and someone and the, and the position is offered, then, then we may accept it. Mm -hmm. Marjorie, even, um, and yeah, I actually realized that I used the wrong word position and I apologize for that. Marjorie, even when it comes to a service, you know, sometimes I come across devotees where they're like, you know, um, and I can understand that because they are afraid, you know, they have some hesitance of taking up the service. 
you know, am I really qualified for it? How do I know I'm qualified for it? Um, yeah, how do well, we help? You know, we should, you know, qualification comes by observation, by higher authority, by, by the results that we already, you know, if we're getting particular results and the activities we're performing, those results may, may indicate a certain service that we can perform. Everything is done by, by results. And there are people who go for position, but they're more eager for the position than for the service. It's all about service. If one feels I can do, I can do better service in that position, or I can do more meaningful service in that position, one may aspire for that. But then it has to be, then it has to be accepted. Thank you, Maharaj. Are there any questions from other devotees? This has been a very nice discussion. Yes, Sudha, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you, Mataji. Hare Krishna. Uh, Dhanu Pranam Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Shri Prabhupada. All glories to you. Um, um, thank you, Guru Maharaj, for the very nice class. Uh, I have a question. Um, please forgive me, I'm very less intelligent soul. Um, I'm just trying to understand. Um, so here, Guru Maharaj, like uh, the decision, like Bhima said, like he should be killed. And Draupadi Mata took decision based on her experience, her emotions. Um, so how should we understand, like uh, usually in um, also like uh, real life, like uh, we take decisions based on the emotions and based on the experiences we had. And um, is it like a right way to take decisions based on... Um, well, you're, talking about, you're talking about something material? <clears throat> uh, uh, it's, it's a spirit here, like um, they are like a very self-realized souls and they took the decisions uh, based on um, Draupadi mother, she took decisions because um, she herself lamented because she lost her sons and she doesn't want like... Um, so what is the question? So uh, is it like um, based on which modes um, like uh, Draupadi Mata and Bhima said... <clears throat> You'll see the whole situation is not so easy. You're trying to find an answer in something that is not so easy. You'll see Krishna is conducting this whole thing, and it comes out just according to Krishna's plan. Mm -hmm. If you try to figure it out using this example, you will find that there are so many different contrary opinions and ideas. Mm -hmm. And all of them are right. Bhima's right. Draupadi's right. Arjun's right. Everybody has a perspective coming from a certain understanding of the situation. And they're all right from that perspective. But then again, a decision has to be made. What to do with this person who committed this crime? Okay. It's not so easy. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so When you get to these situations, if you find something as complex as this, which I think is very rare in our life, mm -hmm. but it does happen. You know, you have people, you, you see people have come together in a group for a particular, uh, say they come together to, as a business. So th there might be different opinions on how to organize the activities in the business. And everyone might have their own understanding of what is the best. And then again, it has to be, has to boil down to a decision. Mm -hmm. Three or four devotees are to co coming together and they have to do a particular service. Say they're working in the kitchen. And so the, the kitchen cooking has to go on. So different opinions on how we should do it, what we should cook, or, you know, uh, you know so many different opinions that may come about how to proceed in the cooking process. But then again, all of them may be nice, but then again, in order to proceed, one particular way has to be accepted. Okay, good. It's, it's, so you have, to, you have to understand the position, the, you have to understand the situation and then act in the best possible way. Okay, okay.
Okay. And that requires Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. When you're Krishna conscious, it becomes clear. Mm -hmm. Okay, Maharaj. So, yes, good Maharaj. Yeah, I got that point. So, intelligence is important. So, once your intelligence is purified by Krishna consciousness, then you can make the right decision. So, yeah. Yeah, until, yeah mm -hmm. until that has and then we can until we come to that understanding if we still remain motivated by personal interests or confused by the situation then we should mm -hmm. always be aware of our limitations and then go to higher authority mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay good yeah. okay good yeah. i got that yeah, then, then, you're, then you're safe mm -hmm. then you're safe Okay. Yeah. You know, even if you go to higher authority and something goes wrong, it doesn't matter because you're following the process. But if you do something independent and it may also appear to go right, it's wrong because you acted independently or maybe whimsically. Mm -hmm. Could be seen that way in certain cases. <laughs> So thank you, Guru Mahat. So it's very important to understand what Krishna wants and act in that yeah. way. And all you have to do is understand what the Guru wants. Guru and that, wants. that comes by experience in your in your devotional life. And if mm -hmm. the experience is not there, then it can come by questions. <clears throat> yeah. Yes, very much. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Yeah. You thank like to ask questions, and that's good. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Maharaj, but I'm very less less intelligent soul. I'm still learning. Uh, it's very complicated for me to understand um, basic things. So, oh, thank you. But, yeah, I think you need to simplify your understanding of how to receive the answers. The answers are quite easy to understand. Mm -hmm. And you may ask your questions until you get to that point, but don't try to complicate the answers by trying to somehow or other take it and see it from a different angle mm. you, know, you know every answer that's given can be seen from different angles but what is the angle that has been given with the answer that you're supposed to understand can, can you please repeat the last one Guru Maharaj? yeah what you know a, a guru or a leader may tell you to do something and you can take it from different ways. You may mm -hmm. say, go out and preach. And you might think, oh, all right, I'll just preach any way I want. But then he might also indicate how you should preach. Mm -hmm. And so unless you clarify, you know, the details in the, in the service that you're asked to do, you might find out you're doing something different or something wrong. Yes, good. But if you know, if you have experience, then and that comes with dedication to the authority. If you don't have that dedication, the that experience will never develop. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so that much. Was, that was a very nice question by Sudha Mataji. And thank you for the wonderful answer, Marge. It was really, really nice. I definitely benefited from it. So thank you yeah. for actually bringing that up. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have to thank um, you, Mataji. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. I know we're probably going to be closing soon. I'm looking at yes. the time. But let me just pull in one. This is not uh, yes. just a request. Um, Maharaj, um, and it's not you, it's just um, uh, the management from your end in, in Gideon, I, I'm Gideon, in Harrisburg also. We at some point said that there would be arrangement for you to give a workshop on humility. And I still have that at the back of my mind. Um, so I'm saying it to Maharaj, but actually it's not Maharaj that's uh, arranged it, he will preach. So those of you that are supposed to you know, set up, can you con contact Madame Sia and let's have this wonderful um, 
I'm not beating you down now. I don't think I'm doing it, but just reminding you that we could we could have this humility uh, workshop and it would be very nice. So please could you arrange it? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if you <laughs> just want arrange to know. it, arrange it and let me know when. I will merge. Thank you so much. I have to buckle up. It's I I have to confess that with all the upcoming festivals, it has overtaken my life, but I will definitely contact you, Marge. I understand, and that's true, but I'm not trying to get you, you know, I, you're my wife, I would know, of course, but anyway, still, I want, <laughs> <laughs> still want to have questions anyway, I guess. So. Okay. Maj, so, would uh, you like to end with one round, Maraj, or do you? It's, I don't know if it's a courtesy where you are, but it is for where I am. Yes, Maj, it is a courtesy for us to hear. Okay, then perfect. Well, let me just get my beads. And sure. And March, while you're getting your beads, I just want to confirm with you if you will still be able to give the class next Thursday. That's the schedule. Yeah. So. Oh, we'll perfect. Be... Great. Two weeks we're of mercy. Back on we're back. Great. On schedule. Thank you, March. Okay. So chanting around of Japa is more than just an exercise in ending the class. It's a way to focus our consciousness and to kind of like gather everything we heard in our discussion in, in a more rememberable way. Holy name is the source of all everything, especially remembrance. Mm -hmm. Hi, Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasiri Gaur Bhaktavinda Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasiri Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama 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 Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama Hari Rama Rama Hari 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 Krishna Hari Krishna 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 Hari 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 Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari, Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Rama Rama Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Hari Hari. Hari Rama, Hari Rama, Hari Hari, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare
Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Hari 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 Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Hari Ram, Hari Krishna, Hari Krishna, Hari Hari. Not in the bathroom, not in there, no. Oh, Thank you so much, Maharaj, and thank you to all the devotees for joining us. Bancho Kapati Biascha, Kripas in the Vevacha. Patita Nampa Venebio Vaishnavio Namo Namahashila Prabhupad Ki Jai. His Holiness Chandramali Swami Ki Jai. Yeah.